Hey, what's going on guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. Let's get idle started up and let's see what we can do here. Let's save this as uh, file.python. Get our shebang line started. Environment Python. Create a new class here. Oh, a random, random dash. Define a constructor. Make sure you spell everything right. That tends to be a problem of mine. See? Case in point. <laughs> and now let's test here. If the name is equal to main. Alright. Let's set up a root object. And now we can start working. I'm going to create a new string variable. I'm going to call this self.string. And it's going to be, uh, this is a joke. Because that's a good string. So I'm just going to print that out self.string, and then we'll cat on some new line characters. Now I can print this and get this is a joke, and those new line characters that we wanted. Okay, so uh, now let's check out what we're going to be looking at in this video. Uh, this is, I'm going to introduce a function to you guys today called uh, split. And what it does is when you use the dot selector with your string variable, you will be able to split your uh, your string. And what it'll do is if we uh, if we run it here, It'll look for, by default, any white space characters, and then every time it finds a white space character, it will uh, it will remove that, and then add whatever it just found from that last position, and add it to an array. So it splits up your string into an uh, into array or a list. So let's run this, and I'll show you what I mean. If you see, this is a joke right up top, down here we have a list called, uh, this is a joke. So for every space character that it found, it, it rem at least, it didn't, it didn't bother with them, and it just created a new, uh, a new list can fi uh, filled of everything else that's inside here. So now, you can think of it that the white space is our splitter, and you can actually pass in some other things that we'd want to split with. So if we just wanted to pass in that space character, just like we did before, it's going to get that same output for us, but if we change it to a space character with an I after it, it's only going to get up to here without breaking this next bit. So let's try and run this here. Let's see what we get. We get this, and then it removes that space I, and then we have the rest of the string, so joke. So we can pass in what we want to use to split it up. We can also pass in a number for how many times we want to split something. We can pass in, uh, we can leave it as space again, we can pass in maybe two. So now we get this is, and then a joke is one whole string here. We could pass it in maybe one, and then it'll get this, and then is a joke for the rest here. Now we can pass in zero, and we'll still get returned this entire string that we had right up here, except it's inside of an array. So as you can see, this is kind of a complex function. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to try and recreate this all on our own. So uh, I'm going to get rid of all these parameters here, and we'll create a new function. I'm going to call mine split, and we'll pass in self as always. We're going to use a string to split variable. Obviously, we need that. And now we can type in a splitter. And remember, that's an optional parameter. That's going to be set to be none. And then we can have count, which is how many times we're going to do that. And, and remember, that's, an, uh, that's a default parameter. Again, it's optional. So we're going to set that to be none. Let's get our code block started. And now we can test right off the bat. If splitter is equal to none, then we have to do something about that. Splitter is equal to none. We can pass in split equals, oh, sorry, splitter. Remember, we have our variable name to be correct here. String dot white space. So that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be using the string module, so we have to remember to import that right up here at the top of our program, and then we can use the white space, uh, that variable. And what that is, is if we import string in our interactive shell, we can do string.whitespace and check it out. It's all of these space characters, tabs, new lines, all these things here, and then return character feeds, that sort of thing, and even space characters. So now let's try and work with this here. What we're going to need inside of our function is obviously a new string, because we can't modify the one that's passed to us, we have to recreate our own, and we're going to need an array, or a list, that we're going to be able to pass back once we've finished processing. So uh, let's do something here, let's, uh, let's get started with the bare basics first of all. We can test if, uh, actually we can st begin to loop anyway, that's a good start. We can do for character in string to split, and now we're going to begin to loop through it. And then we can test if the character, or if this, the current thing that we're looking at is inside that splitter thing. So if it's white space, what we can do is we can add to the array what we've currently found here, new string. 
And we haven't added anything to the string yet, but that's going to come up in the else statement, or if it's, or if what we found is not in that splitter list. And then we can do a new string, and we can reset it back to normal, or at least back to nothing. So when we have our else statement, if we don't find anything, we should add that to new string. So it's something that we're going to be able to process and understand. So new string plus equals character. And uh, now that should be easy enough. When we're done here, we can uh, when we're done looping anyway, we can do array plus equals new string. So when we're done looping, we still have some characters left over, but we're going to want to add those back in new string. And remember, it has to be inside of this array, inside of an array block here, so it, it understands it as a list, and then we can return array. So now if we go back up to our constructor, we can try this all on our own. Print self.split, we can pass in self.string, and uh, that's all the parameters that we've got set up now. So let's try and run this. We get, this is a joke from the first, the, uh, the regular function, and then from our function we get that same thing. This is a joke. So it's understanding our white space thing so far, but let's try and pass in some, some things of our own. Let's do uh, this one here. We can pass in a space character for the top one, we can pass in a space character for the bottom one. We get this is a joke the way we should, and this is a joke the way we should, but now let's try it with our I example. If we add an I right after that space. The top joke understand the top uh, the top function anyway understands it correctly. It, it removes that space i and just gets the rest of the string. But our function doesn't do it correctly, and this is because we haven't added support for it yet. So uh, let's go ahead and try that, and we'll see what we can do. We can uh, test right up here. Let me let me get started. Let's close Unity first of all. I don't know why that's doing its thing. Unity, go away. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So now we can go up here inside of, uh, before we start looping anyway, we can test if our splitter is equal to the string.whitespace. So if it's the whitespace by default, the way it should be, we can loop the way we had beforehand. We can, uh, we can pass this in here. Oh. Let's copy and paste that code right into our, our new if statement. And we can tab this out. Make sure everything is indented the way it should be, and now it'll only now it'll only run this if our string has white space in it. So if we run it one more time, it's not going to return anything inside of that array because we haven't we haven't uh, accommodated for that yet. So let's add an else statement out to our uh, our uppermost if statement, our conditional statement here. So if the splitter is not equal to the string dot white space, then it's something we have to be worrying about ourselves. So uh, what we can do here is uh, let me check out my notes on that I've got on the side. We can set up a string length, and this variable is going to uh, obviously have the length of the string that we're splitting. So we get this, and now we're going to need the splitter length. And that's going to be the length of the splitter variable. Okay. Now we're going to want to increment or uh, loop through the string to split once more, but we're going to be using it with a while loop rather than a for loop because we want to be able to uh, to index or change wherever we're uh, we're incrementing. So we're going to use a while loop, but before we do that, we have to set up our incrementer. So i can equal zero, and now we can do while i is less than the string length. So we're going to loop through it once more, and what we can do is we can test. If the string to split, and we're going to slice here i to i plus splitter length, and if that's equal to splitter or what we're going to use to uh, to split with it, what we can do here is we can do what we did up top. Array can uh, plus and equal the n an array form of the new string, and uh, new string can go back to being nothing. So we can reset for the next time we find something else, and we can add on to i splitter length. So we can skip over everything that we found inside the splitter. And then of course we'll need an else statement so we can add to the new string if we find something that isn't in there. And what we can do is uh, new string plus equals string to split, and then we'll index the current character with i, our incrementer. And now what we'll do is we'll add 1 to i, so we can keep going forward, and that should be set for now. So now if we pass in our, uh, our i variable here, this will run the way that we want it to. If we pass in the, uh, the space in the i, just the way we had done it beforehand, it'll run just the way we want it to. We get this, it skips over the space in the i characters, 
and then it gets the rest of the string is a joke. It does it exactly the way it does in the original function, and our function does it correctly as well. So we've had a little more we've added a lot more code here, but we still have to make up for that count variable or that maximum number of times we can do this. So uh let's let's add that in now. What we're gonna be doing here is changing some new variables around though. What we can do up at the top is uh comment out this new string equals this thing here, and we're gonna reset new string to be the string that we've passed to it. And now this is only set up for defaults, so if they happen to pass in a zero for the number of times they want this done, we're gonna want to return to them. Uh, the regular string. So if we see this up in the, the function regularly, it returns this entire string just passed inside of an array. So we have to be able to do this inside our function too. So what we're going to do is set new string to be equal to the string that we've passed to it by default, and then if we process it, we'll change it back to nothing like beforehand. So new string can be equal to string to split, and now we can start testing. Let's test in, uh, in front of everything if count is equal to none, we can start up a code block, and everything that we've done already can be put inside that conditional statement. Everything up until that last bit of code outside of anything else. So if we copy this in, remember everything should be indented correctly. So what we'll want to do is indent these here. And that should get us exactly what we need to do. But remember, we do need to set new string to be equal to zero, or at least new string to be an empty string. So new string can equal nothing. And now we have our good function. So now we're going to want to test for that else scenario, though. What if it's? What if we haven't? What if we have passed in a count variable, or how many times that we actually want to do this? What we're going to do is test again. But first, we need to be able to loop through it, and we're going to do this with our counter variable. And what counter variable will do is it's going to be an integer, and it'll keep testing whether or not counter is less than count, or the number of times we can do this. So we have to be able to keep track of how many times that we've actually uh, that we've split the string up. So counter can equal zero, and what we'll do is we'll do a while loop while counter is less than count. We can create a new code block here. And now we're going to reset our new string variable back to an empty string like we had done right up at the top. And uh, now we can get the string length once more, just like we did earlier. String length can equal length of string to split. And uh, splitter length, because we're going to be doing that same sort of process that we did up top, but now we're accommodating for that count variable. So splitter length can equal the length of splitter. and we should be set. Now we're going to use our i variable again, i can equal zero, and while i is less than um, string length, remember to spell your variables right, while i is less than string length, what we're going to do is test if what we found is equal to what we're looking for once again, so string to split, index with i to uh, splitter length, and if that's equal to the splitter, we can. Now we're going to get into something different, though. What we're going to do is we're going to test if counter is less than count. That's kind of the same condition that we have up here in this while loop, so we would normally be able to get away with it. But because we're inside of another while loop, it's going to keep going through this condition rather than that one. So even if we change the counter variable, we have to be able to test for it and break out of the loop if we go over that, if we exceed it. So we can test if counter is less than count. And what we'll do here is add to the array, first of all. Array plus equals new string, the current one that we found. And then new string can go back to being nothing. And then i will increment by the splitter length, so we can skip over the splitter. And then counter will add once more to it, because we finally uh, we finally replace something here. So now outside of this if, this if statement, though, we can test if, if we're not less than count, if we've done this too many times, we should break out of the current while loop, and this, that's this one here. So that way we'll, be, um, we'll continue with this condition, and we will not be able to get anything else. So now that we're done that, 
we can break out of uh, those two code blocks, this else statement here and this another if statement, and we're going to add an else statement to that if statement. So now we can uh, set up new string, get my cursor out of the way, plus equals string to split, indexed with i. So we're adding all the characters that we found, and we're going to increment i so we continue to loop. Now we can break out of this extra while loop that we've got up at the top here, and because we may or may not get to the entire string, get through the entire string anyway, what we're going to have to do is continue to loop through it. So we can use our for loop here for k in range. We're going to start counting, and we're going to uh, continue right where we left off with that i variable. Since I was incrementing beforehand, now we're going to use k to increment, but we're going to start with i. So i can go to uh, string length, and then what we'll do here is add on to the new string. New string plus equals string to split, and we're going to want to index with k, because that's our new counter variable. Now that we're done all that, we should be set to go. We've got our, uh, and then array will add up with anything else that we haven't, we haven't added inside of our loop, and if we pass in a zero for the count, though, it'll still remember that the new string has been set to what it was beforehand. So here is our uh, a rather lengthy function. Let's try and experiment with it a little bit more. If we run this the way it should now, we get exactly what we had what we had hoped for. This and then sudden says a joke or su joke, whatever. Now we can uh change this to an i just for potty words and giggles and uh we get th s in that space character, s in a joke. So we get the same uh output as we would with a regular function. So let's try it without any uh, any arguments here. We get the same thing that we hope for. Now if we pass in that space variable, at least a, a string of a, only a space, we get the same output. But now let's limit how many times we're going to do this. Let's do this only only twice. We run this, we get this is, and then a joke. We get the same output with both functions, so that means we're, we've done a good job here. We can change this to 1, how about that? And we get that exam that exact same thing. What if we added that i right after our space here? We get this, and then so joke, so joke, just what we did beforehand. Now let's change these to zero, so we're not going to go through it whatsoever. We run this, and we get this is a joke, and this is a joke. The, both functions have the same output because we've considered everything inside of our own uh, our own handmade function or homemade function, whatever you want to call it. So now you can see, though, when we have this else statement for the count variable, so if we, if we have passed in a number or how many times we want to do this, we're only considering um, if it's not white space characters. Because up here in the first time we checked for the count variable, if we haven't supplied that in, what we're doing is we're testing whether the splitter is the, the default one, string.whitespace. But we know in the next else statement that it's not going to be that case because we haven't even, we are, we are passing in already what the splitter should become. Because if we just pass in a number without the splitter, the original function will have a hissy fit, so R should have a hissy fit, have a hissy fit too. We get self.string.split, and it kind of expects what you should be searching for at first. So let's just pass in the space character again. And if we do this in our function, it'll return the way that it should. So there you go, guys. <laughs> I mean, this is a really, really lengthy function, and it's definitely incredibly complex. So it's understandable if you guys don't understand this the first time, and I don't think I did that great of a job explaining it. But you have to be able to look at the variables and knowing where you are in your position while you're looping. You have to know uh, whether or not it's been added to the final array that we're going to return, that sort of thing. So if you experiment with, I with this idea and you try and build it on your own without my help, you might have better luck with this. But you can see we're doing a whole lot of testing testing, and especially a whole lot of logic, because we have so many code blocks here, we're testing for so many things, we're breaking in and out of uh, loops and that sort of thing, so we have a lot going on here. But, uh, but hey, <laughs> we've done a good job with what we have, uh, what we've finished so far, so I want to thank you guys for watching, thank you for listening, it'd be cool if you could like the video, maybe leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, maybe subscribe, I don't know, it's whatever you want to do, but uh, after watching this video, uh, you guys should definitely give yourself a pat on the back. So uh, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.